Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I released this video because today is Neville Goddard's birthday. So happy birthday, Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard was born on the 19th of February in the year 1905. And that man has changed so many lives, but more specifically in this video, I want to give you a little bit of information on Neville and then explain how he has profoundly impacted my life better than probably more than anyone else in this world or that I've ever met or that I've ever come across. Um, before we begin though, hit the like button if you're interested in Neville Goddard, his teachings in a very broken down systematic way. Um, I teach his techniques, his ideology, um, and how to implement manifestation into your life in a lifestyle. Also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for those videos to stay notified by those videos, which I release twice a week. So jumping into it, that, into it then. As I said, Neville Goddard was born in 1905. From a very young age, Neville had mystical experiences and throughout his life it drove him and ultimately he became a great teacher in the world. Um, from a young age into his adulthood, he traveled a lot. Um, he was a dancer. He came from the West Indies in Barbados, which is where he was born. And he became a dancer in New York City. He was pretty successful. And then ultimately he traveled, um, found out a lot about the occult and mysticism, which that was essentially his driving force. And that is ultimately what caused him to be the person that he was, which was his just extreme drive, his extreme desire, coupled with the mystical experiences that he had experienced. Ultimately, when he was traveling the world, he met people who taught him various aspects of the occult. Some of it fell flat with him, others intrigued him. And then when he came back to the United States in New York City, he met a teacher that most of us are familiar with now. And um, he was a Jewish rabbi by the name of Abdullah. And Abdullah was from Ethiopia, and he was very well versed in Hebrew, in the Old Testament because he was Jewish, but also the New Testament, which is very interesting. And he basically taught Neville most of everything that he knew about the law, which is how to manifest, the law of consciousness. Um, what many basically understand is that he was in Abdullah's pocket for quite some time, for many years actually, studied with him and learned everything that he possibly could. He said he wasn't a master, I'm sorry, Neville said that Neville was not a master in Hebrew, but nevertheless he could grasp onto the teachings and then relate them to his own experiences. So Neville began to lecture and explain how the law works. He had his famous uh, story about how he manifested himself going to Barbados. Now there's no telling how many things he manifested before that, but we do know that he goes over that teaching time and time again because it was very, a very important mark in his life, which was a profound manifestation against all odds to go to Barbados. He manifested himself going to Barbados. And over the years, he separated from Abdullah. He started to have more and more mystical experiences. He ultimately stumbled upon the promise, which was a very powerful mystical experience. Um, and that's when it separates Abdullah and Neville. Uh, Neville focused mainly on the fact that you yourself are God and the experiences that prove it. And Neville also got his, a lot of his teachings from Charles Fillmore, which is a, um, that is the, it, it's not coming to me right now, but it's a church group that talks also a lot about manifestation and the psychological journey through the Bible. Um, Neville's teachings also reflect non-duality, and that's also a very important concept because it explains and elaborates how we are God, and this is very evident in his teachings that this is what he is describing, although he never actually says it except maybe one time, kind of, vaguely. Um, ultimately, Neville reached many people, and I'm 
you know, for me, I was born after his death, but he has impacted my life in a tremendous, tremendous way. So I want to talk about 10 things, or approximately 10 things, um, that me stumbling upon Neville Goddard has changed um, for the better, changed me for the better. So, but I have to do that by describing to you a little bit about my experience. So um, I've followed Neville Goddard for probably, I don't know, five years, four years, something to that effect. But about 10 years ago, I had joined a Bible study. I was in need of something, searching for something. Um, I really knew nothing about the Bible. Um, although I went to Catholic school, they don't really, I never opened a Bible in my life. Um, nevertheless, I joined this Bible study and then it was very interesting. It was different. It wasn't any sect that you would see in modern age. It was actually more like a cult. I didn't know this upon going in. I was just looking for something. Um, so they looked at the Bible a little bit different. But nevertheless, after a few, probably a few weeks, I don't have the exact time and date of this, but sometime in 2011, I had a an extreme, extremely powerful mystical experience in the middle of the night. I Before that, or preceding that, I had a... Um, a nagging thought or an obsessive thought that something big was going to happen in the middle of the night. And then a few nights later, as I woke in the middle of the night on my, on the couch that I was sleeping on at the time, it, it was in my mother's house in um, South River, New Jersey, I woke up and internally I said to myself, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why did I say that? Not entirely sure, but I said it nonetheless. And the moment the tea in Christ finished, you know, coming out of my inner voice, there was a bolt of lightning. Now, when I say a bolt of lightning, I don't mean the thought of a bolt of lightning. I don't mean the feeling of a bolt of lightning. I mean the actual literal sound of a bolt of lightning striking as if it happened right in front of me, but it was centered in my mind. And from that point, when the bolt struck. I couldn't see it. I can only feel it and hear it. It hit directly in the forefront of my mind or my brain and it pulsated and it was electrified and the pulsations went all throughout my mind and reverberated and that crack of the lightning, that sound stayed and then faded out as it would in real life except even a little bit longer. And once that happened, I just stood up, went outside, looked out, and it was probably around 4.30 in the morning because it was just starting to get light. And I just knew that I had power. I had no idea why I knew that. No one told me that. But nevertheless, it's just something that I knew, as if I had control over everything. That is the, the intuitive thoughts that I had at that time. Now, after that happened, I told some of the people that I went to that Bible study with, and they told me to keep it to myself. They gave me no explanation whatsoever, which really hurt me. And it wasn't long after that that I started to notice some discrepancies in the teachings that they were teaching, which what they were teaching was the literal translation of the Bible, which in fact that is not accurate, as I had come to find out later. But nevertheless, after that kind of fell apart and I was removed from that group through a series of events or incidents, um, it was a long journey of me seeking what was that that I had experienced. Now, from that point of being in that Bible study, I had learned that prayers could be answered. That is what I knew. But what I was taught was that there was a guy, a God outside of myself who also, if I, it was aligned with his word, quote unquote, I could receive that which I prayed for. Um, that experience that I had, it set me off to continuously investigate this power that was within me. I knew that I had power. That experience happened, meaning something responded to me saying in the name of Jesus Christ. And it was something internally, yet something independent. And I knew now that I could pray and have things happen. And that's what kind of put me on the path of the New Age thought. Like Abraham Hicks and um, 
Joseph Murphy, The Secret, things of that nature. And I started to discover after years, oh, Napoleon Hill as well, he was a big one for me because he talks a lot about um, creating and using your mind and belief and things like that. But then ultimately, you know, years went by and the teachings that were taught to me, although they proved somewhat fruitful, I had experiences, powerful experiences before stumbling upon these people that these teachings were not accurately matching up to. Now, it's a very important concept and this is for everyone. It's not, we shouldn't follow the teaching and force our experiences to the teaching. This is a dangerous path. But instead, take the teaching and compare it to your experiences. And that's kind of the foundation of testing, which is something I, I um, was lucky to have started testing prayer back in 2011 when I first got into that Bible study. Um, but nevertheless, as the years went on, as I said, there were discrepancies. There were things that didn't match up. One's own experience is extremely important because anyone can say anything, but it, if it doesn't hold up to what is real, then it is not the truth. So anyway, years went by, and then ultimately, one day I stumbled upon Neville Goddard. It was his teachings on revision. And I, at the time, looked at it and thought, and I had never heard a lick about Neville Goddard before. I had searched many times about the subconscious mind and various other teachings, but he had never come up before. It's almost like he appeared out of thin air, but when he was talking about revision and changing the past, it didn't resonate with me. And, and he was talking about God, which I had kind of, like I, when I left that Bible study, I had kind of grown a resentment towards it. Plus, my brother had died, and I was just like, forget this. So... I stumbled upon that, found that, and I saw what he was saying, and I just, you know, left immediately. I said, this is nonsense. But it wasn't probably six months, nine months later, I found him again. And at this time, I was ready. And one, one yeah, excuse me, one of the most powerful things that he did for me was to reintroduce me to biblical teachings. Now, he didn't do it in the way that I had learned it. But I knew the way that I had learned it wasn't true because of things that I had experienced, especially that mystical experience. So getting me back on track with that, but in a way that I could understand, in a way that made sense, was extremely valuable to me. And that brings me to number two, which is the correct translations of Scripture. Now, it's interesting because most people don't care about the Scripture. Some people do, and it's very important because the... Bible is the number one, as I call it, the number one instruction manual for how to manifest. It's been written thousands of years ago, and it is dead accurate beyond anything else that I've ever tried, which I've tried many, many, many things. So it's that explanation as to how to understand the Bible, and that includes the word of God actually means I am, and it means us ourself, myself, my consciousness. That is God. And that is the creative power in this world. And that is also your imagination, the faculty from within the awareness, which is what you create with and what you destroy with. Number two, and this is really what hooked me, or number three, this is what really hooked me in to the point to which I knew that this dude was for real. I had joined a group in Facebook after learning about Neville Goddard and was having extreme success. And I talked to someone about the experience that I had. And I hadn't talked to anyone about it in many, many, many years because I, it hurt me when they told me to keep it to myself. I thought it was weird. Even my own family said I was dreaming, which I wasn't. And it was confirmed and I actually was, I learned exactly what it was when I was talking to this person and she said, when I was telling her about my story, she said Neville had the same thing and she sent me his lecture. Neville Goddard literally had the exact mystical experience coupled with a vision, but nevertheless it's in Matthew 24, 27 and it talks about the coming of the Son of Man, which means Jesus Christ, which means my imagination, but it goes even further. In scripture, it says Christ was crucified in Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. And therefore, when I called upon the name of Jesus Christ and that explosion, that 
thunderbolt struck from within that was the place of the skull. And that made everything ring true. What scripture was saying is that Christ, or God in man form, exists in the skull. And when I called out that name of Jesus Christ in my inner voice in the middle of the night, not external, but internal, I got that internal reaction of God revealing himself in man. So that leads to the next idea, which is that I realized who I was. Realizing that we are God is an extremely powerful realization. It is the most powerful realization. It confirms, not even confirms, but it reveals the power that we actually have. This means that when we, I mean, you can hear it and I can tell you that you are God, but until you have that experience, it brings it true to the point to which there's no questioning it. It's not what someone said, it's what I have experienced, which brings me back to what I said earlier, our experience is the most important. But given that the scripture alludes to God being our true self, given that I had that mystical experience, and given that there's all these characteristics of God in the Bible, I was then able to go in and test every characteristic that God has and then use my imagination and see if I still have that same power. So it helped me to confirm who I am. And then another aspect is just that he confirmed my mystical experiences and my beliefs, which stretches back all the previous bullet points. So another amazing thing is that he taught me how to manifest properly. So that means imagining in first person point of view, and imagining the end, right? He makes famous the whole imagine the end. A lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people don't understand. Most of it comes from the taking for granted or not listening to the fact that you are God or that I am God. And when we realize that we are God, we realize that it has to be coming from us. We have to be experiencing it ourselves in our imagination. So he taught me that. But from that, he helped me to draw my own conclusions and validate them. And an example is what I just said. So the idea that we have to imagine in first person point of view and the idea that we have to imagine the end allowed me eventually to realize that our consciousness is a replicator. It replicates exactly what appears in our consciousness and it must come back to the sender. So what this really means is that when we imagine or whatever we're perceiving is continuously being replicated in the exact nature that it's being perceived. So when we imagine something in first person point of view, meaning I'm, it's like as if I'm standing right here as well in real life, the thing that we impress our subconscious mind with will come back in the exact nature in the exact form, exact location, exact everything that we imagined it. Whereas in third person point of view, if we imagine something in third person point of view, meaning I see myself here receiving this thing, what will happen is another person will receive it and you'll just be the witness in real life as another person receives your manifestation. This has happened not only to me so many times before, but this has happened to so many of you guys who have sent me in um, messages about it. So being able to have a foundation of Neville's teachings has allowed me to, to really figure out and analyze and come to more conclusions and discoveries that really haven't been talked out before, talked about before. And then besides that, the whole replicator, etc., the whole idea that this is a dream. So Neville talks about the idea that we are God, right? But once you research a little bit further beyond Neville's teachings, you realize that he's talking about non-duality in the sense that non-duality explains a lot of what he's saying, but in their own terminology. It's the it's one in the same. It's the exact thing that we are all God, right? That everything is God. And from that, see, the problem with non-duality is that a lot of it talks about how God is awareness, but God plays no part in this world, meaning it's all just happening and it's perfect. But we, if you're watching this, know that that is not true. We know 
that our mind is creating this reality. We've experienced that. So it bridges the gap between the awareness or non-duality and this physical world, which is amazing. But to come to the conclusion that this is a dream, you can look at a dream and realize this is all a reflection of this. When we wake up in the dream, we can create the dream, modify the dream. But while we're in it and asleep in it, we never wake up. It stays exactly the way that it is. In the same likeness, one of the conclusions that you can make that is absolutely true, no question, is that in the dream we experience people, places, things, trees, time and space. But really there is none of that. There is only you. There is only your mind. And the infinite detail that arrives in this dream is the same that arrives in, in reality. But instead of, as in the dream, everything is just your mind and there's no time and space. It's just the substance or texture called mind. In waking reality, it's called awareness. And that is God. That is the God who we are, who we truly are. Another thing Neville helped me do is achieve some of my biggest dreams. Manifesting an amazing relationship. Manifesting moving and having a peaceful life, manifesting a business, and there's countless things, but nevertheless, some of my biggest dreams have been realized by the teachings of Neville Goddard. He has also helped me to have mystical experiences. And what I mean by that is he has opened my eyes to the realm of other possibilities. In his lectures, he talks about various different things. He talks about going to other worlds. He talks about... Um, seeing things that aren't really there. He talks about projecting yourself to other places when you're in your bed, you're really being seen somewhere else. He talks about hearing a clear, still voice, a, a small, still voice in your mind, the mind of God um, answering your questions. All of these, and there's many more, all of these I have experienced. It is absolutely true. So it's opened up the world to me in a way that I would have never figured out before. So Neville Goddard is very personal to me. And I find it my personal mission to give you his stuff the way that I've experienced it. Because it's not that I liked what he was saying and decided to teach it to you. It's that I had experiences, could not quantify them, found him, listened to his experiences that validated mine, and then we merged together in essence. His teachings merge with my teachings, and so what I give you is a culmination of my last 10 years of experience and all of his years of experience that he's ever cared to share. So for me, he is the way, the truth, and the life. We all are. His teachings are. He takes the Bible, dissects it, translates it, and explains to us who we truly are. You are God. I am God. And I would have never known that had it not been for him. I had experienced my experiences. I may have experienced more mystical experiences. But the way that he breaks it down and explains it, and the way you can test it, you can test it to prove who you truly are, is priceless. So happy birthday to Neville. Thank you so much if you're listening to me somewhere in the ether, which you are because we're all awareness. Thank you for presenting to me everything you have. Thank you for changing my life and there's much, much more good that I will do with the teachings than I already have. So thank you, thank you, thank you.